huge excitement. The conversation with the Deputy Minister was efficient. We discussed the, all, the very wide agenda of bilateral uh, uh, track, digital transformation, human assistance. Of course, I briefed the Deputy Minister about the military situation, which is quite difficult, and the reality where Ukrainians live when 10,000 of Ukrainians have been killed. These are civilians. When the, when the civilian infrastructure has been damaged and broken and by the missiles attacks. So I think it was an important conversation, and we hope that our political dialogue would be much more intensified. And I also invited the Deputy Minister to pay his visit in Kiev for the political consultations that we are supposed to have. Thank you. Ma'am, did, ma did, ma did you urge Vishwa Guru support in uh, ongoing crisis in U Ukraine? And uh, will you invite Prime Minister Modi to visit yeah. Ukraine? Yes, the invitation is there. My president uh, will also do so in case if the phone conversation will take place and we request this phone conversation. I think that India as a global player really is a Vishwa Guru of the world. And this is what we also have feel in Ukraine by actually fighting for the values. This is about justice because the war that we have is not about NATO, it's not about the United States, it's about justice because Russia has been questioning the very existence of my country. Within our history of 1,500 years, Ukraine never attacked any other country, like your country. We never has this imperialistic and chauvinistic attitudes towards our neighbors. So I think it's for us it's, it's crucial that we are the victim of the war, of unprovoked war, of the neo-colonial war. So we also feel that we have this arbitrary by, by promoting these values of justice, of peace, as your Prime Minister in Samarkand said, that it's not an era of war. I mean, we do support this purely and, and fully, but unfortunately we have aggressive countries who question the existence of other countries, and then the question if, of, of India's involvement as a, as a leader in the Global South, as a G20 presidency, I think that we hope that India would be uh, involved and engaged into global issues and challenges, economic challenges, energy challenges, nuclear challenges to a greater extent because the Ukrainian issue is a litmus paper today. Ma'am, how do you see India, India importing energy, energy India. from Russia? How do you see India importing yeah. energy from Russia? I mean, look, we are not in the position of instructing India of, of uh, in their economic ties with other countries. We only think that it's crucial to diversify all of the resources, not only energy, but also military resources. Because what we see in my country, when you are dependent from Russia, they will always use this blackmail instrument. So I think that India should be pragmatic in diversing the energy resources, in diversing military contracts, in diversing political interaction. Uh, and we feel that there is a um, extraordinary time that we live in. And as my president, Volodymyr Zelensky, says, extraordinary times need extraordinary decisions. So, of course, Prime Minister Modi, with his 3D uh, policy of democracy, dialogue, and uh, to my knowledge, it's diversity. I think that this 3D and no era of the war uh, and strategic um, application is, is really, really important. So we hope that India and Ukraine would be, even though we are distant geographically, geographically, but we will become closer physically and politically and in many other ways. Ma'am, so have you, you ma'am, ma ma last TV question, last question. And we will see each other later. Ukraine's first deputy foreign minister, Emin Zaparova, who is on her visit to India. This is her first visit since the war broke out between Russia and Ukraine. And joining me right now is our senior editor, Srinjoy Chaudhary, on the phone line. Srinjoy, good afternoon. This is an important uh, interaction of Emin Zaparova, who is Ukraine's first deputy foreign minister with the media over here. What she is essentially saying is that it's an outreach from Ukraine's end towards India. She is specifying about the need for India to diversify its resources, not only energy, but also military resources for that matter. And she stresses on the fact that it's democracy and diversification that India must stress at. Uh, what is going to be the significance of the deputy foreign minister's visit to India? visit she is here and she will be meeting senior leaders uh, uh, minister of state meenakshi lekhi top uh, government officials and so on 
the point she is making is that yes the uh, india already has that india it has to be said buys weapons from many countries not just russia but also america also france also britain also israel also germany and so on india also has diverse uh, diplomatic ties india has close friends with not just russia as she said but also and she knows that very well also with the americans also with the nato countries the western europe and so on so india has that but of course uh she has made it very clear that uh, she wants close ties with india and surely this is a first step towards closer ties absolutely as uh, enjoy uh, but clearly as far as uh, a telephonic conversation is what she's requested between uh, the ukrainian president and the prime minister do we see that happening because there were question being posed to, to uh, the deputy foreign minister that whether prime minister modi is going to be invited to visit ukraine or not yes uh, that could well be the case she could uh, maybe inviting the prime minister that invitation may be with her but of course there could be well a conversation between the two leaders well uh, that was my colleague ashwin joy choudhury sharing uh, all the details from the deputy foreign minister of ukraine's visit let's take a listen to that media interaction that emina zaparova had with the media today It was a great one. I'm very excited to be in India both professional and personally. Personally, I've been in India for probably seven times in Puttaparthi, which is a small village near Bangalore in Sri Satya Sai Baba's ashram, and he's my beloved guru. So again, being here as a deputy minister with my official visit is of a huge excitement. The conversation with the deputy minister was efficient. We discussed the all the very wide agenda of bilateral uh, uh track digital transformation human assistance of course i briefed the deputy minister about the military situation which is quite difficult and the reality where ukrainians live when 10000 of ukrainians have been killed this is civilians when the when the civilian infrastructure is been damaged and broken and by the missiles attacks so i think it was an important conversation and we hope that our political dialogue would be much more intensified and i also invited the deputy minister to pay his visit in kiev for the political consultation stations that we are supposed to have thank you ma'am ma'am did ma'am did ma'am ma'am did you ma'am did you urge vishv guru guru support in uh, ongoing crisis in U ukraine and uh, will you invite prime minister modi to visit yeah. ukraine yes the invitation is there my president uh, will also do so in case if the phone conversation will take place and we request this phone conversation i think that india as a global player really is a vishwaguru of the world and this is what we also have feel in ukraine by actually fighting for the values this is about justice because the war that we have is not about nato is not about united states it's about justice because russia has been questioning the very existence of my country within our history of 1500 years ukraine never attacked any other country like your country we never had has this imperialistic and chauvinistic attitudes towards our neighbors so i think it's for us it's, it's crucial that we are the victim of the war of unprovoked war of the neo colonial war so we also feel that we have this arbitrary by by promoting these values of justice of peace as your prime minister in samarkand said that it's not an era of war i mean we do support this purely and, and fully but unfortunately we have aggressive countries who question the existence of other countries and then the question if of of india's involvement as a as a leader in the global south as a g20 presidency i think that we hope that india would be uh involved and engaged into global issues and challenges economic challenges energy challenges nuclear challenges to a great extent because the ukrainian issue is a litmus paper today ma'am how do you see india, india importing stands? energy from russia how do you see india importing energy from russia i mean look we are not in the position of instructing india of of uh in their economic ties with other countries we only 
think that it's crucial to diversify all of the resources, not only energy, but also military resources. Because what we see in my country, when you are dependent from Russia, they will always use this blackmail instrument. So I think that India should be pragmatic in diversing the energy resources, in diversing military contracts, in diversing political interaction. Uh, and we feel that there is an um, extraordinary time that we live in. And as my president, Volodymyr Zelensky, says, extraordinary times need extraordinary decisions. So, of course, Prime Minister Modi, with his 3D uh, policy of democracy, dialogue, and uh, to my knowledge, it's diversity. I think that this 3D and no era of the war uh, and strategic um, application is, is really, really important. So we hope that India and Ukraine would be, even though we're distant geographically, geographically, but we will become closer physically and politically and in many other ways. Ma'am, have you, ma'am, ma'am, ma last question, last question.